save login, register or subscribe to save articles for later. Normal text size larger text size very large text size the two men were born 5 years and 10 kilometers apart. The first in Sydney's gritty inner west, the latter in the scenic eastern beaches. One stayed planted in his childhood stomping ground as it gentrified around him, shifting a mere 15 minute drive westward during his adulthood. The other migrated south when a golden political opportunity arose, embracing a new cultural milieu and severing ties with the slice of the city that formed him. Anthony Albanese and Scott Morrison, the kid from Camperdown and the boy from Bronte. Two lifelong Sydneysiders running a six-week race to convince Australians to entrust them with the Prime Ministership. Big waves at Bronte Beach, where Prime Minister Scott Morrison spent his childhood. Edwina Pickles as the country's most popular city, Sydney would be expected to send a decent share of leaders to the lodge. For the past three decades it has done far more than that, serving as an unparalleled prime ministerial launching pad. Five of Australia's last seven prime ministers Paul Keating, John Howard, Tony Abbott, Malcolm Turnbull and Morrison were raised in the Harbour City and represented Sydney electorates in Parliament. That dominance is guaranteed to continue, regardless of who triumphs on May 21. This election marks the first time since 2004 when Howard defeated Mark Latham, that two Sydneysiders have led the major parties into battle. Reflecting the city's identity as a mosaic of distinct enclaves, rather than a homogeneous whole, the Albanese-Morrison contest pits two competing visions of Sydney against each other. Densely populated inner city versus sprawling suburbia. Working class versus middle class. Townhouses versus McMansions. Progressivism versus conservatism. The cardinal red and myrtle green of the Rabbitohs versus the sharks blue, white and black. Parramatta Road, Camperdown. Walter Peters. The policy differences between the coalition and Labour appear less pronounced now than many past elections, with both parties eschewing promises of transformative change. Morrison and Albanese's early life stories illuminate the fundamental differences in their worldviews that are not always apparent in their day-to-day -day political battles. It was in Sydney that the leaders' ideologies were formed, with both taking an active interest in politics early in life. Albanese's upbringing helps explain his more collectivist politics, his faith that government can help lift people out of poverty through welfare support and public housing. Morrison's early years led him to see individual enterprise and initiative as central to human flourishing. Both leaders have used their Sydney biographies to shape their political personas and make themselves relatable to voters. They highlight the elements of their narratives they see as advantageous, downplaying those they regard as inconvenient. The Prime Minister back in the day. Scott Morrison and wife Jenny in 1985. Scott Morrison of Facebook, when Scott Morrison seized the Prime Ministership surprisingly in 2018, he introduced himself to a current affair viewers as a boy from the suburbs here in Sydney. In a later talkback radio interview he said, I grew up in NSW, as a suburban boy, it's a description that omits as well as reveals. To most voters, Morrison is closely associated with his current home in the Sutherland Shire, a connection he reinforces with his very public adoration of the Cronulla Sutherland Sharks rugby league team. The Prime Minister rarely dwells on his upbringing in beachside Bronte. It's not something he highlights in his campaign s or speeches. Bronte serves no useful narrative purpose for Morrison nowadays, except as a place he left behind and no longer identifies with. When asked about his Bronte childhood, Morrison stresses it was not the embodiment of affluence it is today. In a 2016 interview with the Sydney Morning Herald, Morrison described the suburb he grew up in as more like the Shire is now, adding that Bronte wouldn't feel like home to me today. With a current median house price over $5 million, the suburb is certainly more exclusive than in Morrison's youth. That said, it was never Skid Row. Morrison's wife-to-be Jenny, who grew up in the southern suburb of Peakhurst, used to tease him about coming from the posh side of town. Which is not to say the Prime Minister, 53, 
was the product of great wealth. After marrying, Morrison's parents, John and Marion, moved into John's aunt's home on Evans Street, Bronte. The house was large enough for the Morrisons and their two sons to live with relative privacy in one part of the home while Auntie Frank occupied the other. Scott and older brother Alan shared a bedroom through their childhood and into their teenage years. Scott Morrison with his late father John and mother Marion. Morrison's father John was a police officer who rose as high as chief inspector in the NSW police force. He was also a longtime member of Waverley Council, serving a term as mayor in the late 1980s. Although nominally independent, John Morrison almost always voted as part of an unofficial liberal bloc, reflecting the family's fundamentally conservative values. While brother Alan showed little interest in politics, Scott delighted in fielding calls from constituents at the family home and helping his dad make campaign posters. The Morrison's ties to the area ran deep. John was a long-term member of the Bronte RSL, the Bondi Junction Rotary Club, and the Eastern Suburbs Memorial Park Group. The family worshipped at Waverley's Presbyterian Uniting Church. The Morrison's were also passionate amateur thespians. As a boy, Scott played the artful Dodger in a community production of Oliver and starred in a Vicks cough drop commercial. Reflecting the city's class-based cultural divide, rugby union was the main game for the Morrison boys' not league. Albanese, by contrast, loves to talk about what Americans would call his log cabin story, the tale of his humble upbringings in Camperdown public housing. The opposition leader, 59, has mentioned his working-class childhood in all three of his primetime budget reply addresses. Anthony Albanese on the far left, protesting at Sydney University about changes to the political economics course, June 15, 1983. Susan Windmiller Albanese's mother Marianne was born in her home on Permanent Bridge Road and lived there until her in 2001. A disability support pensioner and single mother, she had rheumatoid arthritis. With Marianne in hospital for extended periods, the neighbours would take turns in having Antony, her only child, over for dinner. Albanese grew up believing his father had in a car accident shortly after he met his mother on a European cruise. It was only later he discovered Carlo Albanese was alive and living in Italy. Surrounding the Albanese's council estate was a metal foundry, a Grace Brothers warehouse and the Royal Alexandria Children's Hospital. The Weston's Biscuit Factory pumped out an intoxicating scent of baked treats into the surrounding streets. After school, Albanese and other local kids would ask the factory's migrant workers to sneak them wagon wheels and other treats. Loading the community was working class, tribally labor, and strongly Catholic. Rugby league specifically, the South Sydney Rabbitohs was another devotion. By age nine Albanese was handing out leaflets for Gough Whitlam and joined the Labour Party as a high schooler. He says his formative political experience occurred in his teenage years when the council proposed selling off his family's council estate. The residents campaigned vigorously against the plan and eventually succeeded in scuttling it. It was a battle that was fundamental to my identity and critical to the person I am today. Albanese wrote in the Herald in 2014. Morrison's schooling was entirely within the NSW public system, first at Clavelli Public, and then the academically selective Sydney Boys High at Moore Park. Known to schoolmates as Scotty, Morrison rode and played rugby union for the school. Former classmates described Morrison as a middle ground student to biographer Annika Smethist, saying he showed no sign of being a future prime minister. Now dating Jenny, he studied geography at UNSW and completed an honours thesis on Sydney's Christian Brethren Assemblies. After renting for several years, Scott and Jenny bought a two-bedroom California bungalow in Bronte in 1995, not far from his childhood home. At his mother's insistence, Albanese was educated in the NSW Catholic systemic system, first St. Joseph's Primary down the road in Camperdown, and then St. Mary's Cathedral College in the city. By early adulthood he had stopped attending church, although he still describes himself as a cultural Catholic. He became enmeshed in 